And welcome to a new episode of The Simpsons Did It. I'm your host, Steven Skolansky. And I'm your co-host, Robert Skolansky. And this week, we're hot for teacher. Well, you might be hot for teacher. I don't know, I was thinking more Van Halen hot for teacher. I mean, I like to have, you know, if I'm hot for teacher, I gotta make sure I have a fake picture of a hockey player. Oh, right. So to make sure they don't know it's me. Right, right. But no, I, I, I'm actually kind of surprised that Hot for Teacher didn't actually take part in this episode anywhere. Well, I would think it would be really cool for an overlay somewhere, or probably. even the end credits, or or something would have been really cool for Hot for Teacher. Yeah, and so this is uh, season three, episode sixteen, Bart the Lover. Yep, and this week we have a very special guest because, as you heard last week, we just did episode fifty. Yep, and so to kick off the back half of our hundred, <laughs> we figured we'd get a special guest for this episode, yeah. and this guest has an amazing podcast called Simpsons is Greater Than, and I've been listening to it forever, and it's amazing. Um, this guy is... It's really, fan, really good. Really good. Uh, amazing Simpson collector. So if you ever need to check out his uh, <laughs> Twitter or Instagram, check out his collection, I'd like to welcome to The Simpsons Did It, Warren, or as most of you like to call him, Bart of Darkness. Yo, 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 yo. What's up, Steven? What is up, Robert? How's it going, guys? It's good. I uh, So I have a question for you. How did Hit you me. come to the moniker for Bart of Darkness? So <laughs> the I really wish, you know, I've been asked this question and I really wish that I had like a cool answer. And I really should make <laughs> up a lie or something. Uh, when I started my collection, uh, I was like, you know, it'd be kind of cool if I had an Instagram for this collection so I could catalog it sort of like, you know, keep cool photos in one place. And I didn't want to just call it Simpsons collection or I didn't want to just, you know, I didn't know what else to call it. And I was yeah. like, well, my favorite season of the Simpsons is season six. The oh, first episode, okay. Bart of Darkness. Gotcha. It looks nice when you type it out. It has a nice yeah. little balance. Uh, I've always been weird about screen names. It has to be balanced. <laughs> and uh, I punched it in. It looked cool. And there you go. So there's my really boring explanation <laughs> of my name. <laughs> cool. Well, one thing we do like to ask our guests on top of the show, and and I'm sure uh, we've heard it a ton of times uh, with your podcast, but anyone that is either new to Simpsons Did It or new to Simpsons is Greater Than, uh, why don't you tell us maybe quickly um, how you fell into The Simpsons and what makes you so enthralled with it and love it? Oh, man. Uh, well, you know, I could easily make this podcast, you know, three or four <laughs> hours long if I if I was truly honest with you. But, you know, The Simpsons, I, I always say that I'm like the same age, roughly as The Simpsons. I was born about three months before it uh, premiered on Tracy Ullman. And my brother was just a little bit older than me, and it really caught him first. And so there's, you know, there's photos of me uh, in like 91 wearing Bart pajamas, <laughs> holding like Ninja Turtle toys. Um, and I always say too, that I had a single mom and she worked a lot of nights and didn't really get to monitor what we were watching on TV. So, you know, I saw the Simpsons even when I was probably too young to, you know, that I should have been watching it. <laughs> and, uh, I just, it, it always spoke to me for, you know, I, if I really have to narrow it down to my child brain, I think it's just the way it looked, you know, it's these weird characters, spiky hair, overbites, they're, you know, they're, they're cartoonish in a totally different way. And I think if you're a kid born in the time frame that I was, there was really no keeping you away from that. Even if you didn't oh, yeah. get the jokes, even if you were really too young to understand why it was special. And then as you get older and you start to connect with it differently, uh, it just, to a certain kind of person, I think it really connects with you in a way that no other show does. And um, I, I think it just, that staying power that the show has combined with just the way it looks to a child's brain turns into someone like me with a room full of crap. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, and I yeah. get that. I mean, I was born in 83, so I came into The Simpsons pretty much right away. My brother was born in 87. Yep. So a couple years. Yeah. I mean, it, it was more, I was more age appropriate, I think, because <laughs> yeah. I was you know, uh, seven, I guess, when it came out yeah. and on TV, my brother was only three. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, I think I kind of guided him into. Oh the yeah, for sure. Seasons. I definitely and started was, watching because. I mean, it was definitely one of those uh, right before dinner things, yep. five, five and five thirty, watch it, have dinner. And then 
you know, if it was a Sunday, come back for more for the new episode. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, I also will say, like, I think I was the perfect audience for, you know, the dolls at Burger King, you know, the, <laughs> the, all the Bart t-shirts. Like I just really got sucked into that, to that world because, you know, I, I think it all depends on the kind of stuff you were watching. Like I liked weird looking cartoons. I loved Ninja Turtles. I oh, loved yeah, this yeah. sort of thing. So I, I think I was just that perfect target audience for the Simpsons. I wish I, I wish I could dig, I wish I could dig into my brain and figure <laughs> out what makes someone really connect with yeah. the Simpsons, but it really just latched onto me. So cool. All right. So let's delve into it. Like Robert mentioned on the top today, we're going to be talking about season three, episode 16, Bart the Lover, which aired February 13th, 1992. Happy birthday to me. That's right. <laughs> this one aired on his birthday in 1992. Five I don't years know, old. Do we celebrate by watching? We must have celebrated by watching. Yes, probably. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, short recap for you guys to get going. Bart gets back at his teacher by answering her personal ad as a perfect but fictitious lover. So, has anyone ever no. pranked their teacher like that? No. <laughs> I can't, I can't say that I have. I definitely, I definitely remember having crushes on like substitute teachers, but I don't (laughs) think I was ever, I don't think I ever played a prank like, like that, like Bart did. No, I mean, that seems pretty devious, but we all know Bart's a devious little boy. Yes. So, um, unfortunately this week we have no chalkboard gag. So Warren, as you listen to our episodes, you get to see how we like to make up stories on how Bart got writing on the chalkboard. (laughs) <laughs> so we'll have to have you back again with a chalkboard gag so you can join in on, the, on that I'm, fun. I'm, and I'm and as it. we I'm learn and as we learn from Mike Reese, the reason for some of these things is because to make the episode longer. So there you go. That's yeah. perfect. And this was one that went from <laughs> the Simpsons right to the couch. Yep. So uh, the couch gag this week, an alien sits on the couch and then goes away as the Simpsons sit down on it. And it's a repeat. And it's a repeat. So I don't and I don't know if uh who was that? Was that Mike Reese as yeah, well? Yeah, Mike Reese as well. Yeah, he was he was telling us that the repeats were to double up on episodes, but they got rid of the repeats because people would sit down, watch the episode, and think the actual episode was a repeat, and then uh, turn it off. Yeah. I, I want I want to say it was Al and Mike that uh there was one of it was the the episode, like the big episode with the the elephants yep, and the band yep. and the, like they reused that one a ton of times. And I want to mm. say that, that was that was mostly on their episodes. Yep. Yeah. And that's, that's the reason why they stopped doing it is because people sat down, saw the couch gag and were like, well, this must be a repeat. I already saw it. I mean, I mean, for me, you know, sitting down, I, I didn't really care <laughs> if the couch, I was going to watch the Simpsons. Like I really didn't care if it was a repeat. So, <laughs> so this week we start on Bart's class. They are watching an old black and white educational film where apparently a kid wishes to live in a world without <laughs> zinc. So they're li- they're learning about why zinc is important. Um, and this is a parody of the 1940s educational short film, A Case of Spring Fe- Fever. And uh, for any of you people out there, it was also later featured on Mystery Science Theater 3000, which is a fantastic show. Um, <laughs> they've done a lot of parodies. And I believe The Simpsons uh, might have... No, it was Family Guy who did a parody of mystery science theater 3000 so i thought that was kind of cool where you know the sims i mean the simpsons we know love to make references to older stuff like this so it was it was kind of funny to see that and then on top of it so in the film the kid is like he's like oh there's no zinc i he tries to commit suicide we can't because the what was yeah. it the trigger or the the, the, the pin. pin the pin yeah, was pin. made of zinc so he couldn't commit suicide yeah Which, i really I, I got to say, I love how dark of a joke it is that, that yeah. you know, they're, they're not only showing, uh, you know, they're showing an, an educational film yeah. where a kid tries to kill himself, which is dark enough. But the fact that the kids are bored, oh, like, yeah. the fact that they're not even, they're not even, it doesn't even get their attention that this kid tries to pull a trigger yeah. at his own head. So I, that just kills me every time. Yeah. And then he wakes up. I love how he wakes up. I was like, thank goodness. I still live in a world of telephones, car batteries handguns and then it sh- i love how it, sh- it shoots a couple good, of bullets good. out of it and many things made of zinc uh, so good that I mean, is fantastic and then as as warren mentioned you know the kids the kids aren't paying attention we see millhouse is sleeping nelson is carving his desk with a knife <laughs> and bart just yawns they're not interested i mean yeah, martin, don't care. martin is because martin's the geek 
I do um, like I do like how it's the '90s and no one cares that Nelson has a knife. Yeah. In class. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. If that was today's <laughs> age. Oh boy. Um. So Bart gets up and he does you know that ten year old trick or the ten year old boy trick where he gets up and makes the kid look like he's picking his nose. With oh, the I've shadow. done that. I know. I think we've all done that. Of course. Yeah. Of course. It's, you it's know. It's hilarious to a ten year old. Um. So. Mrs. Krabappel then tries to get the kids, uh, any kids to stay uh, <laughs> after school because the bell rings. They're all going home and she wants, she's like, oh, we can talk about zinc or anything, whatever you want. And then she's like, I'll even do your homework for you. You and, know, I, I feel so bad for Miss Krabappel. I mean, yeah. I feel like Marsha Wallace does such an amazing job in this episode of like humanizing the character. Oh, for sure. And I, I, th- I think she's absolutely incredible in this episode, but. You know, I also feel like as a character, like Miss Kay, she's got to be fun. I think she deserves like better than than she gets here. I think she clearly, you know, has a lot to offer. I don't, I don't yeah. get it. Well, as we saw in the Flaming Mo episode, she does, you know, like to go out and dress up and right. try to meet Homer. Men, yeah, try to hit on Homer, who's a sing- <laughs> who's not a single dad. Um, so yeah, no, Mrs. Kramopel probably probably I mean, fun at parties. I mean, and, did she? Okay. So that's the weird, that, and I think we've talked about obviously continuity with the yeah. Simpsons, and it's so weird to think, okay, party animal, Kerbopple, and now she's a loner. Like three episodes later, I mean, maybe she went through every, I, <laughs> I don't know, or tried to. I, I, it, I mean, you can. But here's the thing: you can be a partier and lonely. Yeah, I, mean, I guess they're not. Yeah, you you could have levels to that, you know. Yeah. But I, I will also say, I mean, and and I I don't know if I'll offend any of your listeners by saying this, but there's there is no continuity. There no, is no. no true continuity. Uh, people get mad when you know there's like something about Homer being born at a different time. I, who cares, yeah. guys? Come on, there's 700 episodes. <laughs> no, no, yeah. and that's and that's fine. I just I think early, like obviously we're on season three and they're trying to develop character arcs. I think it's true, at least yeah, a little true. bit. And obviously now I say you know after you know seven, eight, nine, then they get into the wild stuff, yeah. and that's fine because like like you said, they've already been around 100 plus episodes. <laughs> I think it, I think it also kind of starts, and I know there's a theory out there that I think we've all heard about the ep- the prank episode with Bart where Homer gets knocked into a coma by the the Buzz yep. Cola, and the theory is everything that happens after that episode, Homer's in a coma. Yeah. So, I mean, there might be some, I mean, I, and as we've talked about before, I feel like there is some, a little continuity with The Simpsons, but obviously they go a little back and forth. So, uh, Mr. Mrs. Kerbopel leaves, or Miss Kerbopel leaves school to go to the Quickie Mart and she buys a can of Chef Lonely Heart soup for one <laughs> and it's chicken noodle soup. And it also has a picture of a chef with a tear running down his cheek because, you know, <laughs> all my hearts. That's a pretty right. good gag. I that, like was, that. that was great. And so then she, you know, buys a scratch off ticket. I, I love this scene because Apu uh, tells her he hasn't seen her since they doubled their prices. And then he asks, oh, are you still teaching? And she goes, uh, I don't, uh, she, you know, she's like, I don't know. And she scratches off the ticket and she loses. She's like, yep, I'm still teaching at least for one, <laughs> one more, more day, one more day, day at least. Yeah. Day. And I feel like that's all, I mean, a lot of people can relate to that too, with their jobs. They don't like, but they can't quit and they buy lottery tickets and they don't hit it. And I think that's what, a very are, are relatable you, are, are you, thing. Are you, are you saying that I have a gambling problem? Because, you know, I don't, I'm not, this is not an intervention, okay? <laughs> no. uh, I mean, you might, I don't know. Um, so, <laughs> But I do like how, how uh, Pooh apparently is also doubling prices this, at yeah, the Yeah, because he of needs course. two. Because it's like, well, it's like, I mean, they, we don't know they have a grocery store yet. Well, we do from yeah. the last episode. But I feel like a lot of people go to the Quickie Mart to buy random crap they don't need to eat. Yep. <laughs> like any other, you know, gas station. So then she's driving home and her car breaks down because her ex-husband poured sugar in her gas tank. But was that, okay, did, did okay, she had an ex-husband, obviously. Yes. But I feel like he doesn't play much of a part. Do you think that was just the, uh, the uh, what was it? Gas the, station attendant? The gas station attendant thinking that her ex-husband sugar tanked her car? Or do you think it was like Bart Simpson sugar gas tanking? I mean, <laughs> that's an interesting question. I do. I mean, I do feel like there's at least one or two more references to her having an ex-husband. But like, 
It's, it's really hard to, it's, it, you never see him, which I, you know, again, I want to know what is wrong with Miss K. I may, maybe I, maybe I secretly just love Miss K. <laughs> maybe that's what it is. Warren the lover will retitle this episode. <laughs> so, uh, so we, Kerbaffle goes home. Uh, we see she has a purple cat. Uh, which I don't think I've ever seen a purple cat. I've never cat. seen a purple cat. I'm, I'm no. assuming that's an animation thing, but maybe either lost in translation or they they told him to make it purple to maybe stand out. <laughs> I mean, that's why the Simpsons are yellow. So there you go. they stood out. Cats are purple. Although yeah. Santa's Little Helper's black and Yeah, that's true. Or not Santa uh Snowball's, Snowball's too. black and yeah. Santa's Little Helper's brown. So they're normal colors, yeah, but that's true. Maybe it's one of those African purple cats. <laughs> I, I think I told myself that it was like probably like a gray cat that just sort of the maybe the the night like the moon was casting sort of a purplish <laughs> tint. <laughs> That's on the on the cat, I'll I'll, like I'll stick with I like that. that. <laughs> uh, so then we see a little chalkboard in her kitchen, and it reads, "Great tests, homework, cat food." Well, she, <laughs> has, she has her priorities she straight. Does. She's got to make sure the kids, you know. But what's homework? There's a great test and homework, and then like feed the cat. I'm yeah, assuming I that's what that is. If, was it two separate lines? Yeah, it was, was like three lines where it was great tests, homework, cat food. Or well, does she have her own homework? You know, we'll, we'll we'll get into this later in the episode, but this episode is full of sexual innuendo. So maybe that homework uh, just means something uh, filthy. Who knows? You're yeah. not wrong. <laughs> um, so she uh, she has the Springfield magazine, and there's a picture of Krusty on the front, and it, the headline reads, "Krusty picks Springfield's best chili." Yeah. So so yeah. that it's chili cookoff. Yeah, it must be chili the chili cookoff cook week. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other articles in the magazine, uh, we talk with J.D. Salinger, and as, um, <laughs> for anybody out there who doesn't know who J.D. Salinger is, very famous novelist, but a re- recluse, yep. doesn't like to talk, yep. so that's the joke there. Uh, Springfield on one dollar a day. <laughs> well, don't <laughs> go to the quickie mart for that. No, they double the prices. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, we get a personal ad uh, page called "Looking for Love." Uh, call Klondike five three four five seven. So is that our first Klondike phone number? No, because no. uh, Homer has it when Bart tries to call. Uh, he's uh, when Bart gets in trouble, and he has to call. Like his work, it was Klondike. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they they love their Klondike fives. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So then Krabappel's like, "Eh, screw it." She calls the number to place an ad, but then she gets impatient that no one answers, and then she yells that she needs a man because <laughs> she wants to place the ad. She needs a man, and you know it's you know again they're 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 doing a really good job with her character to humanize her, you know, showing that she's lonely. Um, so then after that, we cut to back to the school. There's a school assembly. And honestly, this is probably the second best thing in this episode for me, at least. Uh, Bart throws a paper airplane and hits Todd Flanders in the eye. And he goes, ow, my eyeball. (laughs) And everyone starts laughing. You think that would be a Ralph moment, though? I know. (laughs) Not a Todd Flanders moment, but it's still hilarious. Todd's is... Geeky, I think, he is does. Ralph. He so, does. I mean, okay. So, to be fair, who hasn't uh, been wild during the pre-assembly? We all go oh, yeah. and hang out with their friends. Yeah. Who doesn't oh, do yeah. stupid stuff? I, I was I was not the best kid, so I, I'm sure I did plenty of that. See, that's another thing. I watched way too much Simpsons from too much of, from way too young, and I, yeah. I, I I took those things to heart a little too much. I was spending too much time in the principal's office. So you were a part my Simpson. poor mother. Oh, 100%. My poor mom. I feel so bad for her. <laughs> and so uh, so Skinner finally walks in and he tries to get the kids to calm down. And he's like, I can wait as long as you. And then after literally like two seconds, he's like, okay, knock it off. And they knocked it <laughs> off at least. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess, I don't know if, ever, I, I mean, I can't think of our principals being no. that... I mean, uh, like, in our schools, the kids usually were able to remain calm when, like, the adults were talking. Yeah, even in elementary school. Yeah. And so <laughs> we have the assembly, and it's uh, led by Ted Carpenter, and he walks out on stage. Let um, me set the tone, so lights are down, comes out on stage. Kids, this is a yo-yo. Kind of dull, huh? <laughs> Not much competition for a video game. Or is it? <laughs> Presenting the Twirl King champions, Mr. Amazing. And he's a man in a blue jumpsuit, hand flips onto the stage and twirls out six yo-yos at once. It's pretty amazing. It I is. mean, I, that's that's spectacular. Yeah. 
And then Ted Carpenter is like, sparkle! And a woman in a blue jumpsuit twirls out two yo-yos, then twirls out two others from her ears. Yep. That's... I'm going to say physically impossible. Ah! Yeah, probably. Cause, probably. Yeah. Probably. Unless she had, like, those <laughs> loops in their ears, and they tied the, you know, the, like, the earring. Yeah, but once, but once the yo-yos <laughs> drop, though, because, you know, we have this thing called gravity. <laughs> Maybe. And then, next up, zero gravity. gravity. Uh, and and uh, this guy moonwalks out onto the stage and twirls a yo-yo towards the ceiling, and it doesn't fall down. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, I... I mean, I, I loved know. playing with yo-yos as a kid, but I never was able to do that. I mean, I could do some pretty good tricks with the yo-yo. We'll get to that in a second once we get out of the out of the playground. So, uh, the last <laughs> guy, the cobra, and a man pops out of a wicker basket, opens his mouth, and twirls a yo-yo from his tongue. That's a really big mouth. Yes, <laughs> really, a really, really, small really yo-yo. sick trick too. A really yeah, sick trick. Yeah, that is a really sick trick. And the and Bart's line. Those guys must be millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Now, okay, so who is, okay, so as we were young, who did we see or something that we thought, oh my God, these guys must be millionaires and I want to do this when I grow up. Have you guys had that moment? I mean, probably athletes. Yeah, yeah. for me, it was unfortunately athletes, which it turns yeah. out that's just true. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, none of us were good enough for that, which is you know, I, I, might, I might have, I might have thought that like, teachers made a lot of money it's hard to look back on that and remember yeah. I, i'm sure i looked at anyone in authority and assumed they were just you know super rich <laughs> yeah and i mean it's kind of funny to think about even nowadays where video gamers and youtubers oh, are yeah. millionaires I and know. and it's like if we would have just known that back when we had our nintendos yeah that we could have been gaming on a camcorder and posting it on the early internet and letting wait are you watch. are you guys are you guys not millionaires <laughs> Because I'm out of here if you're not. I'm, I'm out of here if you're not. <laughs> that's why. That's why we don't. Uh, that's why we don't. We get free guests. So yeah. I know oh, we don't okay. Have to pay for being on the, on the podcast. Yeah. Um, so, so after that, um, the Twirl King. You know, they they do a uh, kind of a stunt show with um, the song. What was it? Oh, Age of Aquarius. Age of Aquarius, that's right. <laughs> that was fantastic. Um, so I do, good. I do like the scene where they're doing all, like, they're on the stage and they're all doing tricks. And that's when Bart's like, oh, these people must be millionaires. And then we go up a level. And Nelson's like, they must get all kinds of girls, even though, you know, Sparkle's a girl. Although, who knows what her preference is. Sure. And then uh, Miss Hoover uh, questions the educational value of this assembly, which Krabappel replies... It'll be one of their few pleasant memories when they are pumping gas for a living. <laughs> Such a good burn. <laughs> Kebab really cooks them. I love it. Uh, <laughs> At least she has a sense of humor this yeah. episode. She's got to have a little little bit of something. And she deserves it, man. Come on. Yeah. She's, had, she's had a tough time. <laughs> yeah, and one thing I would like to point out that Miss Hoover and Mrs. Kebab are smoking below a sign that says no smoking. She's a badass, man. Yeah. <laughs> they, they're teachers. Maybe, they maybe I really am in love with her. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, we do see him smoking in the uh, teacher's lounge, which, you know, okay, I get it. They also but, drink in the teacher's lounge, as we'll find out soon. Well, exactly. <laughs> but I feel like maybe they should at least follow the rules in the auditorium. But, but the kids don't smoke, so they don't really care. <laughs> right. <laughs> And so, um, after the Age of Aquarius, uh, the yo-yo people pull Skinner on stage to yo-yo around him. <laughs> and he's like, hey, that one grazed my ear. It's like, uh, you probably shouldn't move because you could get hurt. <laughs> I mean, yo-yos are freaking hard. Yeah. Yeah, also, also Skinner's genuine fear, like, when he responds to that, he's like, oh, my God. Like, he's like, he's really freaked yeah. out. He's like, all right, I'll be still. I love that. But at least he participates. I can feel. I feel like Skinner sometimes just does not want to participate. Well, he probably doesn't want to be there, or that, <laughs> or his mother wouldn't let him participate in a yo-yo yeah. uh, assembly either. All true. Um, so then we uh, get to the end, and the curtain closes, and Bart's like, "I want one of those yo-yos," and uh, Mill is like, "I don't even care how much they cost." <laughs> I mean, <laughs> which hey as kids i mean yeah. i had a yo-yo and, yo -yo. and i was one of those i was one of those kids that had to get one of those yo-yos that self wound up to oh yeah those, i can't remember what the name of those were okay so 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 no i think i know what you're talking about so when i was in junior high 
Yo-Yo's had a real resurgence in my age group because I, and I think it was because of like the Yomega, like X brains and fireballs. Do you guys oh, remember those? Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I swear this exact same thing happened to me. Like one day I get to school and every kid has a yo-yo. So I, I this scene is jarring to me now because I'm this is my experience. Like every kid had a yo-yo. <laughs> if you didn't have a yo-yo, you were a dork. And also yeah. they got so bad in my school that they literally had to ban them. Like yo-yos yeah. were like out of control in my junior high. Oh, this is not God. a joke. <laughs> yeah, I think by the time I got to middle school, I think hacky sacking was what got taken away. Like, oh, no. everyone was hacky sacking. See, when I got to middle school, I, I don't think there was a big thing that got banned. Not that I remember. Slap bracelets? Or was that still before? Ooh, slap, slap bracelets. Slap oh, bracelets, I think for me, was high school and they didn't get banned. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, so, those dangerous, dangerous slap bracelets. Yeah. All they did was go on your wrist and no one cared. Yeah. All oh, right. yeah. You can't wear a hat to school either because that's too distracting. Come on. Oh, exactly. <laughs> I think nowadays, so kids are wearing hats to school. I know. It's Times bullshit. I wanted to wear hats. <laughs> I didn't get to wear hats. Times have changed again. So uh, they're all uh, getting autographs outside because who else doesn't want an autograph from a celebrity? And Lisa. Celebrity. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> and obviously, Lisa is, you know, one of those girls that looks up to women and she obviously goes up to a sparkle and says, Oh, I want your autograph. And it's like, well, this isn't your picture. <laughs> oh, that's a picture of the old sparkle, <laughs> <laughs> which leads me to believe, which leads me to the question. What happened to the old sparkle? <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't cut it as a yo-yo or anymore. Maybe. And then, you know, and then the guy, Ted Carpenter's like, get it. Like he crams them all into a van. Cause they have like three more shows to do that day. <laughs> three more schools to hit. <laughs> Like, what time was this assembly at? Probably, like, early morning? Like, they must have, yeah. Like, if you have three other schools to go to, my God. it feels like that show went on for, like, an hour. But I feel like when we were growing up, all those assemblies we had, like, D.A.R.E. and the oh, Fire, yeah. like, all that, it was, like, rotate. I think they yeah. went to, like, all the schools on the same day. Yeah. So It's wild. Because I, yeah. I, I, think, I think so. I think you're right. I feel like I would see those, and, like, if you ever happen to meet a kid from a different school... Like yep. they would also complain about the same thing. There's, you know, there's, there's no way they had multiple teams out doing that all day. I mean, maybe they did. Who knows? Oh, I think the Dare program might have. Yeah, that pro- that one probably did. Um, so we cut to the next day, and all the kids now have yo-yos because it's the hip new thing. Um, and so we cut to Nelson trying to do a trick, and he can't do it. So this kid <laughs> mocks him, and Nelson's like, "I got a trick," and hits the kid with the yo-yo. And uh, as we've mentioned in the past episodes, I think the last, I forget what the last episode was where we saw Nelson's two bully friends, but they're there with him. Yep. They are. I noticed that too. I love seeing those guys. I think, I think you don't see them since Bart the General, if no, I'm not mistaken. They, they actually did come back. It was a uh, season three episode. It was. Ah, yeah. okay. Was I'm it? glad somebody, I'm glad someone thought to bring them back. I wish they yeah. were still there. I know they would look weird. By they would look standards, really but. weird. Yeah, I, I think the thing was is, they went away after Dolph Kearney and Jimbo got introduced, and yeah, I think right. the writers probably thought, okay, we introduced more bullies, let's just mix Nelson in with them. Yeah. And then, I don't know, maybe what happened in the writer's room, and they were like, oh, you know what, Dolph Kearney and Jimbo, or Jimbo haven't been in an episode in a while, let's bring back these two, yeah. you know, lackeys from... I love those little cronies, man. They look so <laughs> awesome next to Nelson. Yeah, it was... Yeah, because we did mention it when they came back that we hadn't seen them since Spark the General, and then they came back. So now wow. now they're there for an episode, and uh, as we like to do, we'll put a pin in it and see if they show up again. Yep. Um, and so... I, 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 would, I would like to think... I was going to look it up, but I didn't. I kind of wonder when uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Secret of Ooze came out, because yeah. I feel like Nelson would be the guy that would do the Michelangelo around the world. Oh, yeah. With and just rail a bunch of kids in the head with the, yeah, with the yo-yo. Yeah, he definitely would do that. Absolutely. So then we cut back to the Simpsons household and Bart's in the kitchen doing tricks and Homer sees him doing it. And he, you know, he motions Marge to come over to watch because he's really good at yo-yoing, which... I mean, some kids were able to pick it up. I was okay with it. Oh, I could walk the dog. That but the but trick that Bart does, where it does the triangle. triangle? Oh, to, oh, I could oh, do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I was pretty. I was one. pretty decent with a yo-yo. I was pretty nice <laughs> with a yo-yo. I gotta say, I I couldn't. I I could walk the dog and like you know make it sit there for like a few seconds before popping it back up. <laughs> uh, that was about my extent of my yo-yoing. Um, so he tells uh, Marge that he could quit his job soon and live off Bart. 
Because, you know, Bart and Homer are kind of on the same wavelength of, oh, yo-yoers make a lot of money. And then Marge goes, Homer, name one person who's gotten rich off of yo-yoing. And Homer goes, Donald Trump? No. Arnold Palmer? No. Bill Cosby? No. Because none of them made their names off of yo-yoing, obviously. No, no. Arnold Palmer is a drink. No, I'm kidding. He's a golfer. No, I, I think, God, it's it's really weird to think about. But this does not, I don't think if this line was said oh, today, it this, would stand it, up at all. The only guy in this, in this, in these three that are, is not a bad person from what I know is, is Arnold Palmer. Palmer. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, he made an awesome drink. And, or, and he made his money on the drink, but he also golfed a little bit. That yeah. Was <laughs> um, but yeah, that I when I heard that line, I'm like, Oh my yeah, god, like, thank god this aired in ninety two and not it feels 30 years weird. Later. It it feels weird to hear his name in Homer's mouth like yeah. that. I know. It feels like, weird. But yeah. I mean he's been around forever, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, but like, but his name is dropped in a future like in one of those future episodes where right. he releases president. Which right. predicted the presidency. So yeah. no, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's okay. It's okay. We won't get to that. We just did our future prediction episode last episode when the Simpsons predicted the Super Bowl. Yes. So yes, they did. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that line does not really age well in this day and age. Um, so we cut back to school, and Kerbopel is now teaching the kids about the Pilgrims, and also goes, <laughs> "Do they have yo-yos? Enough about yo-yos." <laughs> um, and then Mill and like okay, they landed at Plymouth Rock and and they went with the Indians and Mill was like, oh, they had yo-yos, right? And she goes and she's like, I'm sick of hearing about yo-yos and I won't. She's like, I won't accept any homework assignments if if they have anything to do with yo-yos, written about yo-yos, nothing yo-yo related. <laughs> Did you say like dioramas about yo-yos? Yeah, dioramas about yo-yos. And I I get it from you know an adult perspective. At some point, they get, and as you said, Warren, your your school band yo-yos. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's she's had enough of the yo-yos. I'm sure with everything she's dealing with, she's just sick. Of, she's sick of hearing about the about the damn yo-yos. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, as she's teaching another, I don't know if it was more pilgrim stuff, uh, but Millhouse asks Bart if he has any new tricks, and Bart's like, "Yeah, watch this." I, no, he's, he's like, like, he's like, just one, I, a little something I like to call. Plucking the pickle. <laughs> yes. And I, let me ask you guys, do you guys know what that means? I no. don't. Okay, so plucking the pickle is literally a term for masturbation. Oh and, and what is really funny about that is, and I, I, I had heard this and I did a little research. So apparently the writers really wanted to call one of the yo-yo tricks something that had to do with masturbating. But the censors were being really crazy about it, obviously, and plucking the pickle was the only one they could get past the censors. So that is true. Plucking the pickle, and there's a few more in this episode that I swear mean masturbation, but plucking the pickle quite literally is masturbating. So there you go. And this this makes it even better, I guess. (laughs) I built up a little steam, and... Yeah, (laughs) it's it's so filthy. This episode is full of filthy jokes. Yeah, so Bart twirls the yo-yo, and it smashes into the aquarium, and water in the fish pour on the floor. Mrs. Cabrabo looks over at the yo-yo in the aquarium, and follows the string all the way to Bart's finger, and we get, I think this is probably the first one, the I I didn't didn't do it it from Bart. (laughs) Yeah, that's fantastic. So Uh, good. Uh, and as we all know, Bart did it because yeah. the, the, the string went to his finger. But okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, but is that the episode where that's the episode where he goes on to Krusty the Clown show and does yep. the I didn't do it yep. bit? Yep, that's yeah. the bit. Bart, Bart, Bart gets famous. Yep. Yeah, so yep. I feel like Bart's a little head of the game on this one. He is. I, I, I love to see. I would love to see the class all turn to him in the next scene and say, "Okay, Bart, <laughs> stay in the line." line. <laughs> So, you just finished, that's all. <laughs> so, you know, Bart gets a month of detention and Bart is cleaning up and uh, Willie comes in to take the fish. He's like, oh, the fish are going to a better place. And we get like a couple seconds of silence and then we hear a toilet flush. Yeah. Because <laughs> he flushed. I mean, what, what else do you do with dead goldfish? Yeah, yeah, and, and, and like, these yo, and these fish have great names. I just want to oh, point yeah. out, St- Stinky and Wrinkles yes. are great names for yes. cats, for for cats, for fish, for fish. Yeah, <laughs> well, for cats too, Not and for name. cats, yeah. and for and for cats. But fish, yeah, that was fantastic. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but man, do you think a month of detention is 
a little much. strict. That is a little strict. But I it mean, is Bart, though. No, but okay, so what happened to the whole Bart gets sent to the chalkboard? I will not yo yo, <laughs> I will not pluck my pickle in class. <laughs> Uh, now I'm waiting for a chalkboard gag where there, there's something like that. I don't think they've done it yet. But you guys are never going to see this episode the same now that no. you know what that means. No. no. <laughs> oh my god. So so Krabappel asked Bart, you know, if their roles were, were would reverse, would he? Oh, yeah, so Bart goes up. He's like, oh, can I get my yo-yo back? He's like, you know, if our roles were reversed, would you give me back the yo-yo? And then Bart daydreams about being taller than Mrs. Krabappel, and he's doing the <laughs> whoop. And takes it away and and goes up and down and then it flashes back. He's like, "Yes, I would." <laughs> so Bart Love apparently uh, he's a liar. Well, that <laughs> and apparently he really wants his yo-yo back. Well, yeah. I mean, okay. Has anyone gotten something taken away from a teacher? Um, I'm sure I have. I can't think of anything specific, but I'll tell I'll tell you a funny story that reminds me of is my friend Nate. Uh, shout out to Nate if he ever hears this. He once had his iPod taken by his principal, Ooh. and his principal was going to keep his iPod until the end of the of the year, Ooh. which I thought was like the most insane thing I'd ever heard at the time. This was in like high school, so yeah. I can't think of a specific example. But anytime I see that, I immediately <laughs> think of Nate having his iPod taken. I do know what I got take took it away from me. Okay, so I don't know if if this technology ever made it past my grandpa. So put it in perspective, my grandpa had a lot of money and he yes. got some of the most randomest like technology. I had a pen that was a radio. Oh wow. my god, I forgot about yeah. that. And so wow. you put the so you put the headphones in like the top of it and like you literally turn the dial on the pen. It was a radio. And I remember in school one time I was like writing, doing my homework, but I had one earbud in my <laughs> ear listening to the radio while I was doing and that got taken away from uh. me. When I mean, did you get I, it back, though? When did I you get did, it back? I think it was end of day. I think it was... Okay. Yeah, and then make sure you don't bring... Basically, don't bring, don't it, bring back. it back to school. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure I've had stuff taken away and, like, given it back. I know the big thing in my high school, and this was, like, when cell phones started to be kind of a big thing. Um, kids had cell phones taken away all the time. And yep. Oh, yeah. So, Playing Snake every day on my snake. Nokia 955, oh, man. absolutely. Come on. Come on. Yep. All right. So, where? Sorry. So we see a drawer with other <laughs> confiscated yes, items. Yes, the other uh, contraband. Uh, we got a slingshot, which I'm guessing was Bart's. Probably S- squirt gun. Probably oh, Bart's. Bart's. A play, dude. Definitely Maybe Bart's. Nelson's. Maybe, Maybe Nelson's. Nelson's. <laughs> I'm calling that Bart's too. Bart's too. Okay. <laughs> and uh, that that had a headline that said says Updike on the mart- Martini. Yep. All right. <laughs> John Updike. <laughs> yep. Future guest. Yeah, oh, there nice. we go. And so Krabappel, uh decides to go out on a date with Jasper. So she got it. She she got a she got a man from this uh, personal ad. personal ad, and it just happened to be Jasper. <laughs> and I like how she's like, I don't think this uh, is you. And she holds up the picture, and I'm assuming just a young Jasper, Jasper with yeah. a. You gotta with be a young Jasper. Well, and you know what's funny? So I'm assuming like personal ads have been around for a really long time. Oh yeah. But it's sure. funny to see that in 1992, they do the thing where people don't use real pictures of themselves. Right. Or Jasper like, Catfisher, bro. Yeah. Definitely yeah. Catfisher. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, let me ask you something else about this Jasper interaction, because, well, you know, this is just the filth. This is just the yeah. filth spectacular, this episode. Uh, do, are you are you guys familiar with the phrase that Jasper well, he attempts to make a joke, but he can't remember the line. Are you guys familiar with the saying that he attempts to make? No, I don't think so. So, so he says, he says, just because there's a little snow on the roof, and he says, "Oh, I can't remember how that goes." So that's oh, he is he yeah. is beginning to make. There, there's an old saying, uh, and I actually pulled the actual definition because I want to I want to get this right. So there is an old saying where they would say uh, there may be snow on the rooftop, but there's still a fire in the furnace. Oh and my god! Yeah. So I... what that means literally is even if a person is in her his or her senior years with gray hair, he or she can still have ambition and energy, especially referring to sexual energy. <laughs> so Jasper was letting her know, like, hey, don't be scared. I still got it. So but he forgot again, it, but he forgot the line. Filthy. Filthy. <laughs> and it's funny because I would almost consider Miss Krabappel a cougar. Yeah. You know. For sure. So yeah. not as old as Jasper, obviously, oh, but you know. <laughs> She's probably in her mid-40s. Yep. And yeah. so we see Miss Krabappel the next day kind of sulking at her desk because 
she just went on the date with Jasper. Yeah. And I'm guessing he didn't put out or she didn't put out. Put out. <laughs> the um, fire was not in the furnace. No. no. And so Bart's fixing the sink, which I don't think is one of those detentionable jobs. No, it's I mean, not. sweeping the floor, cleaning gum off maybe the bottom of the desk. Yeah. Fixing plumbing? Eh, a little baby. That's more of a willy job. <laughs> That's a willy job. And But he's like, I solved your problem. Someone shoved a Malibu Stacy head down the sink. It was probably him. Also Bart. <laughs> it was probably Bart. Bart. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, Bart, you're going to fix all your pranks over the last like yeah. couple weeks. <laughs> and so... And as grading papers yep yeah so edna's uh going through the grading papers and uh there's a couple of uh names on there one of them is king crimson no no no. the guitarist name from king crimson which is adrian blue which i never heard of the band king crimson but apparently writer uh probably one of the writer animation animators like the band so they threw it in there so there's a lot of things i'm gonna have to track down john vidi and and uh, pick his brain on this episode okay <laughs> <laughs> no for sure well as as we learned from uh uh warren over here that uh his guests don't take credit for episodes that they write they spread it around to other people oh they, they love so, yeah I, I, fa- I found that you cannot try to give a writer credit for anything they're like, they're like yeah you know my name's on the script but don't you dare give me credit for this episode I'm like all of us worked on this episode i hear it all the time but i, yeah. I love that though i love it yeah. yep and so hoover and enda uh decide or hoover, hoover comes, comes in, in she's like hey it's happy hour in the teacher's lounge <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm sure mo has happy hour why don't they just go to Moe's? Maybe that. Well, Bart's still there, so they can't leave. Oh, until they can't leave Bart. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they're gonna leave Bart alone in the classroom <laughs> instead of sending him home so they could get drunk in the teachers' lounge. Yep. And so obviously Bart's like, "Time to get my yo-yo." And I swear I've probably done this too, where teacher walks out of the room and I'm like, "Sweet, I could go get my thing out of this room." <laughs> I don't know if I've done that with a teacher, but I've done that with our parents. Oh yes! Yeah, oh, when, when mom and when mom and dad take something and they like leave, and they forget like because our mom her memory is kind of not great now. Um, but like I, she would take confiscate something for a week. I'd go grab it, and she forget she took it. <laughs> I relate to that too. <laughs> yeah, and so then he lifts up the yo yo and sees Edna's personal ad in there. Yep. And one plus one equals two. Question mark. Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> pretty pretty clever, I gotta say. That's kind of uh, that's kind of cool. Yep. Recently divorced, fourth grade teacher wishes to meet a man age eighteen to sixty. <laughs> that's not pretty. Why? I mean, if she, like even if she's in well, her, she's like, a cougar. Come on. Well, if she's in her mid forties, yeah, okay, cougar. Anyways, uh, object <laughs> save me. Right, Edna K. Box four hundred two. I mean that's I for for a personal ad that's pretty funny and pretty clever with the one plus one equals two. Gotta yeah. love it. Yeah. But man, she was uh She's desperate. Yeah, apparently. Maybe <laughs> well, she'll start going teaching over at the uh high Shelby, school the Shelbyville High School. Shelbyville High School. <laughs> or Springfield well, High School. I see okay, maybe you know. Does Springfield actually have a high school? They do because you actually. Oh, I guess. Yeah, they do. Holy to, merge. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think what episode it's in, though, but there's like an actual. Oh, my God. I literally <laughs> just had it. And I lost it. But they 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 make a reference to the high school students in an episode. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you, I, we just don't see it outside of Homer and Marge, though, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So Bart, you know, he, he sees it and he, he decides he's going to write a letter to Edna to, you know, pretending to be something somebody else because that's what Bart does. He pranks people. And this is the letter he wrote. Dear Edna, I've never answered a personal ad before, but I found yours irresistible. My name is Woodrow. And the reason Bart chose Woodrow, because he was trying to think of a name, and he looked up at a wall of presidents that they have in the classroom, and he saw Woodrow Wilson. So he goes, my name is Woodrow. I like holding hands and dinner by candlelight. And, oh, yes, I really hate yo-yos. <laughs> and, and I wish you would have done it in the Spanish accent. I can't Woodrow. do it in a Spanish <laughs> accent, like in Kerbopple's head. But like, yeah. like, why? That's the funny thing. I'm like, why is Kerbopple thinking, I mean... Because she's imagining him like I know, how she but, wants him. But okay, so so her her guy that it's, she's looking has a for Spanish has accent. a Spanish accent. Well, clearly, <laughs> that's her uh, imagine imagination. Yeah. So you know, uh, they cut back to the Simpsons. This is kind of a weird scene. Um, 
I mean, I guess it, it develops the beast story, but so we cut back to the Simpsons where Marge and Homer are in the kitchen and Marge tells Homer they should let the dog in. <laughs> And Homer says, but dogs love the outdoors. And we cut to the outdoors and we see Santa's little helper just shivering outside and he tries to get some water out of his bowl, but the water in his bowl is frozen and his tongue gets frozen to the water. And when did it turn winter? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> it, it is an it is an odd. Yeah, it, it is sort of just it just sort of changes on a dime for the yeah. scene. But I, I got to point out that. Homer explaining the doghouse to Marge (laughs) might be one of my favorite jokes in the entire series of The Simpsons. Like Uh, him just saying, let me walk you through it. You got, here's your, here's the door. And this happy little character is the sun. It literally, it's, it fucking destroys me. It's so good. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Marge suggested, you know, Homer, you know, buy a doghouse. And he's like, Marge, you've been brainwashed by all those doghouse commercials. Like, what? <laughs> uh, okay, I don't ever remember seeing a commercial for dog houses. No, no. like that I could think of. But it's 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 funny because it's kind of you know commercials are a lot of commercials tend to be aimed towards children because they'll go ask their parents to buy them because yeah. adults are usually not as susceptible to seeing a commercial. Like, no, no, I, no, those as seen on TV commercials, man. Well, you, yeah, not for I'll me. buy all that as seen that, on TV that's, stuff. That thing, will, that will work on some people. It really will. And I, I, I just firmly believe that Dan, there should be an award specifically created just to give Dan for that reading of the explanation of the doghouse. I cannot uh, stress enough how perfect that joke is. I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, and you know what? Marty's probably right. It's, Probably safer just to buy one, and it would probably. <laughs> I don't know if it'd be cheaper to buy one. But Homer built that awesome spice rack that only collapsed after a week. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's definitely safer for them to buy one, especially yes. for Homer. So Bart comes home after they're done talking about the doghouse, and uh, uh, he Marge is like, "Oh, how was detention?" He goes, "Oh, I'm starting to get the hang of the floor waxer." So now they have them fixing pipes cleaning desks and waxing the floor so where what's willie doing camping out and just flushing fish yeah flushing fish well as we saw in the episode where uh skinner burned will you marry me in the grass skinner or willie just sat there and watched bart you know planting seeds so willie's probably somewhere in the back making sure he doesn't screw up yeah instead (laughs) of you know actually probably doing the work himself because he's an adult I'm gonna. And my my head cannon is gonna be that he was getting those uh, Lucille Ball oyster shells ready uh, for the uh, Springfield swap meet. In the uh, yeah, yes. yeah. So uh, the mail comes and uh, Bart goes through it, and we get a letter back from Edna. Um, and the address for the Simpsons in this episode is 94 Evergreen Terrace, Springfield, yep. USA. So they moved again. Their house just picked up and yeah, because it used to be nine four three Evergreen Terrace. Yeah, yeah. So. I've, I've always found it so odd that it took them a while to land on the seven forty two, but uh, it, it's it's really bizarre. I, and in fact, the first time you hear seven forty two, it's not even their house. So I think oh. that's even weirder. It's it's like I think it's I think it's Snake's house, if I'm not mistaken. But oh. you know, you, you talk about the letter coming to Bart. I, I'm going to say again, another really sexual joke. <laughs> Uh, clearly another masturbation joke. She tells Bart that the photo will get his pencil moving. Yeah, I Come got on. that. I got that one. I got that one. This um, will get your pencil, pencil moving. moving. I know. My God. Oh, uh, and so in her letter, uh, she tells Woodrow that he's not like any other man. And Bart replies, she's right. When, you know, he read that. And then, uh, <laughs> and, but he, but Bart's. She's right. He's not like any other man because A, he's not real, and B, he's the 28th president of the United States, which is what <laughs> Bart says. And Bart is actually right. I'm yeah. impressed that he knows that Woodrow Wilson is the 28th. Because to be perfectly honest, I I don't know. I know like most of the presidents, but I don't know most of the numbers. I couldn't I couldn't tell you the numbers on a lot yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah, that's a little too smart for Bart, but it definitely works for the joke. And unless, so, unless he was just staring at the photo at the school, they had them all in order. That's I guess probably, that's yeah. true. So they probably knew. That's true. And so, as Warren mentioned, uh, Edna sent a sexy picture back to uh, Bart, and I love Bart's response. Well, 
you have a date with the Xerox machine. Because <laughs> I, I don't know what Bart's playing with it is. I'm assuming it's going to be passing it out to kids at school. Yeah, unfortunately, we didn't get to see more of it. Yeah, yeah I, well, I really I really hope that Bart didn't actually do what he says that he did in his letter back. Because, again, super filthy. We'll be there in a second. Yes. Yeah, so Homer tries. Uh, <laughs> so, now, so now we're in the backyard. And Homer's trying to cut the wood for the doghouse and fails and says, the hell with this. And Todd hears Homer from his backyard. Well, I mean, they're right near next door neighbors. Yeah. And so, sitting down to dinner, Maud asks Todd if he <laughs> like some vegetables, and he says, hell no. Hell no. <laughs> and then Maud asks Todd what he said, and Todd replies, I said, I don't want your damn vegetables. <laughs> oh, my God. The famous, I don't want any damn vegetables <laughs> line. That's classic. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I, I just, hearing Todd That's... say that is just... But, you know, so I was kind of looking up because I couldn't remember which one was older. And I believe Rod is the older one. Yeah. Right. Um, and so, but, you know, Todd is the more impressionable one of the two Flanders kids. Yeah. So it kind of makes sense that he would hear this and say it where Rod would probably hear and go, oh, he'd probably yell at Homer for swearing. Right. Yeah. Those are dirty words. We don't say those. Can we, can we, can we also talk about how funny it is that... Oh, that Ned punishes him by telling him he's not going to hear any Bible <laughs> stories. Yeah, that's a that's a punishment. Yeah. yeah well, so, punishment. but here's the thing. But for the Flanders household, you know, Rod and Todd <laughs> like Bible stories. Yeah. So for them, maybe it is a punishment. But it's you, pretty funny. You yeah. knew you knew I had a temper when you married me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mom's like. It's like, aren't you a little hard on Todd? <laughs> well, and, and it's funny because I don't. Th- we haven't gotten the flashback episode yet. Of you know Ned uh, being with his parents oh, and him yeah. going completely crazy, crazy yeah. so it's kind of a kind of good foreshadowing. Of, it is. Of, I never thought about that. You know, That's true. Ned, you know, learning about Ned's actual childhood. Yeah. And so, <laughs> well, <laughs> so Ned calls Lovejoy, and he's eating some pie. I'm assuming. Yeah. And he's like, oh, is clearly this... a pie made of ice cream because it just melts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like what, what, what kind of pie just melts into, uh, I, I never understand that joke. Yep. And so he's like, it's Ned, or uh, Helen's like, oh, it's Ned. Oh, if he's after those damn quarters again. <laughs> because in, in the scene, uh, he was telling a story about how he shorted a guy uh, a quarter and it took him all day to track him down. And it was revelation. <laughs> that, whole, that whole scene is unbelievable, to be honest. Yeah. Everything... From the family to the phone call, all just perfect. Yeah, perfect yep. stuff. And so it's like, ah, oh, Ned said a, or, uh, Todd said a bad word. Oh, um, do do some. What was this like? Did he? He must have picked it up from somewhere in the Bible. Yeah, He's like where in the Bible? Oh, page nine hundred. <laughs> and actually, in the Bible, I believe they do say "damn" a couple times and yeah. "hell." I've well, never I, actually read the Bible, so... I, I think the best part of that joke is how, you know, he tells him that he, he didn't want any damn vegetables, and his response is, well, Ned, you know how kids are. Sorry. Was it asparagus? <laughs> I love that he chose to asparagus. <laughs> so good. I, this episode is unreal. This episode is so damn funny. Yeah. yeah. My and, God. And so after he hangs up the phone, he's like... Oh, the damn Flanders. <laughs> so even love Joey is going to swear. Yep. Uh, and so Bart now goes to Lisa for advice on writing a second letter because he used up his A, a material. On boy, holding one. hands and candlelight dinners. Man, that's some A material right there. <laughs> yeah, but Bart hasn't had his first uh, love yet. No, that is true. It's also, I think it's coming up, though. It I is. believe so, yeah. yeah. Coming, coming up, up soon. Uh, and so Lisa's like, oh, who's the girl, Bart? Yeah, you know, as kids will be, oh, you have a crush. Yeah, I was like, is it Sherry? Is it Terry? <laughs> is it that weird girl? <laughs> no, yeah, the weird girl with the the what's the lazy eye <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> and he's like, no. And then eventually he just wanders off because yeah. he's not going to take, take any it. crap from Lisa. Yeah. And so then we cut back to Ned and he's kind of going through the list of, well, where, where did, did Todd hear this? And... He's like, well, it's not from TV. And he's like, and uh, Ma's like, well, he used to watch Davy and Goliath, but he stopped because the thought of idea of a talking dog was blasphemous. <laughs> That's fair. I love that so much. Well, God created the animals and a talking dog is not one of them. <laughs> it should True. be, though. Yeah, right. <laughs> so possible bland influences we see on Ned's list are bumper stickers. Okay. Yeah. Comic oh, books. Yep. 
I well, <laughs> I mean, I read a lot of comic books, and unless you're talking like Deadpool or Suicide Squad, a lot of it's. I mean, yes, there are some, but most DC stuff and most Marvel stuff is pretty. Makes um, a hell of a tame. lot more sense than bumper stickers, though. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I've seen some raunchy bumper stickers. That's yeah. true. That's true. And then there's Grandma. <laughs> I don't know. Our 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 dad's mom. Or dad's mom. Yeah, she used to... So I guess we never beat the, the Flanders grandparents. No, I don't think we ever do in almost 700 episodes now. Yeah, they're probably the, only, the only time you even really hear about them is when uh, Ned lies that they're going there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Homer loves Flanders. And then the last one, television. Which it wasn't. It wasn't. So Bart decides to go and ask Marge if she saved the love letters <laughs> from Homer she sent to her. And there was only one, and it wasn't really a letter. It was more of a postcard from Duff Breweries. And then we see the... Uh, World's biggest pull tab on the front. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. I do love... I love this postcard because uh, Homer's like, Oh, Marge, you have such a nice... Like, what was it? Like a nice butt or something? It's like... A butt that just won't, won't quit. quit. <laughs> it's like, oh, pretzel. Five dollars. Give me a... Be- and like, <laughs> like, he wrote it... Clearly, you could tell that he wrote it drunk, and it was... I love it because, you know, in college and after college when I would hang out with my friends and we would have our, you know, once, you know, once a week hang out where we probably drink a little too much and the slurring of words would start. I just, it, it just reminded me of that. And it's just, it's hilarious. And I love how Marge thought that was thoughtful enough to save. Yeah. Well, <laughs> to be fair, clearly Homer doesn't write anything to Marge. So... I mean, he told her she had a nice ass. I mean, I, yeah. I think that's worth holding on to. You know? Yeah. So, um, so Bart, you know, Bart kind of thought it was cool too of Homer. Yeah. Um, so we cut back to uh, Bart cleaning up at uh, Edna's desk, and she sighs. So Bart goes, "Oh, Penny, for your thoughts." And as you know, as he's asking that, he spits into a a, a mug and he cleans it with his spit. Spit, spit shine. <laughs> a little spit shine. <laughs> oh, gross. Uh, uh, so Bart decides to write another love letter Um, so then we cut back to uh, Ned trying to figure out where Todd is getting a potty mouth and he's outside playing with Rod and Rod doesn't swear I don't think Rod uh, you know Rod probably wouldn't have said it so he's like oh not from his brother and then all of a sudden Flanders hears from the Simpsons backyard Homer is swearing up a storm because, you know, he's trying to build the doghouse and Homer can't build worth crap. And so Ned goes to talk to him, you know, hey, can uh, I, I oh, love he's like, he's like, look, Homer, all of us pull a few boners now. Yeah, and why then. didn't I write this down? I swear <laughs> this is like one of the funniest things no, because here, I got it for you. It, oh, you got, got it. it. Hell got yes. It. So it's Hell like, yes. look, Homer, all of us pull a few boners now and then. <laughs> Go off half cocked, make asses of ourselves. So I don't want you to be hard. I don't want to be hard on you, but I just wish you wouldn't curse in front of my boys. Uh, yeah, I, the, the the real topper on that is that I don't want to be hard on you because <laughs> it's already really funny, and he sort of trails off. And he's like, you know, I don't want to be hard on you, but yeah, it just never stops. So. Uh, I do love Homer's reaction when Ned comes over. He's like, he's like, oh, if it's about the camcorder. I lost it. <laughs> well, I love that too. And but that that doesn't even care about the camcorder. He cares more about the fact that Homer, you know, is swearing. Although I'm pretty sure stealing is a bigger sin than swearing. Yeah, but man, Ned Ned saying ass and half cock, cock and, and I just love the boners. emphasis, like the, just the yeah. emphasis on those words. Oh my god! And so Homer tells Ned that he doesn't complain about his mustache. And Ned's like, well, what about my mustache? Well, it just makes it seem like you have something to hide. <laughs> He's like, and so Ned's like, all right, Homer, uh, how about this? I'll shave off my mustache if you quit the sailor talk. And then he, Homer goes, aye, aye. And as Ned walks away, I love how Homer calls him Admiral Butthead. <laughs> God. Such a ch- such a playground insult, but it's Homer, and it's so funny. So uh, good. Um, and so we cut back to the school and now Hoover is reading Bart's latest love letter while hanging out with Anna in her classroom. And, and she's like, oh, when are you going to meet this guy? Well, first I'm going to write him back and then I'll reel him in. And Bart is sitting in the back of the classroom, but he's clearly listening to them talk. 
Um, oh, no, because she's like, oh, I'll ask for a picture first. Yep. And so he overhears that. And this is probably my favorite part of this episode because I'm a, I'm a huge hockey fan and I'm a huge Red Wings fan. And Bart grabs a magazine in the classroom, mind you, called NHL Stars of 1969. I don't care why this magazine is in there <laughs> because of the fact that he pulls out a picture of probably the, one of the greatest hockey players of all time in Gordie Howe. And it's just <laughs> so great. I absolutely love it. Yeah. yeah, it's great. And they hit us with the stats at the end of the yep. episode. I, I got those for it. For anyone who cares, I got Gordy's I, ca- I care. Okay. <laughs> I'm probably the only one, but. Yep. And so, wow. So Homer tells Marge uh, that Fl- uh, Flanders thinks that he swears too much. And Marge is like, well, you know what? I agree with him. And Homer's like, oh, look at you taking the side of Mr. Goody Two-Shoes. But yeah. Is there a conversation where you don't bring up your hero, Ned Flanders? And Marge's like, well, actually, you. No, 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 no. <laughs> no this is so, you know, we talk about perfect jokes in this episode. Yeah. But I, I got to say, too, that Marge saying that her father used to curse a blue streak and it almost cost him his job as a baby photographer <laughs> yes. is one of the funniest jokes I've ever heard like if you I feel like if you don't pay attention the joke is gone and it's, you don't really realize how funny it is. Now here's my Perfect. question because we do learn in a later episode that Marge has a fear of flying and it's because her dad is a steward. Yeah, I, I don't exactly <laughs> know where that necessarily came from. And also I think we blew that out of the water when they flew to DC during uh Yeah uh, Mr. Lisa goes to the Washington. Washington. They fly yeah. to Washington DC. So the whole fear of flying thing just kind of gets flowed completely out the window. Yeah. And I yeah, think- everything with her dad is never really important. You really only like, it's so weird how there is no, you never really learn much about her dad and what you learn is ever shifting and it's never the same. And yeah. then he's just not there one day. It's just well, really weird. I, yeah. And the funny thing is, is during like the prom episode, the way we was, is he actually liked Homer. Like he yeah. was, he was the only one that actually approved of Homer being with Marge. Yeah. And, but and we don't really learn what he did in that episode. No, no, there was yeah. no job, but it is kind of funny that apparently he went from baby photographer to flight attendant at some point. <laughs> well, I guess it was flight attendant when she was really little though. So Marge was a little a kid. kid. Oh, that's true. When, when he was so a maybe he got fired as a true, flight true, attendant, true. and as his next job, he was a baby photographer. photographer. There we go. <laughs> we figured it out. See, we yeah. talked it through. We yeah. got it. <laughs> and so I love how Homer's like self improvement has always been a passion of mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? Okay, Homer. We got gotcha. you. Well, he lost weight. He, like, he did. He, he did lose weight during Brush of Greatness, so he's yeah. a little bit of self improvement there. True. And uh, so they get a swear jar. And Homer asks Marge what scenarios about paying to the swear <laughs> jar. And uh, one of the funniest was like, well, if we snuggle, is it okay if I say uh, bad words when we do that? Oh, my like, God. Yeah. Another know, filthy so fucking joke. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's, I don't know why I'm throwing I'm throwing so many curse words on your podcast. That's I hope that's fine. okay. Oh, that's I don't okay. know why, but like, again, another filthy joke. Like Marge is fine with Homer saying all kinds of bad words as long as they're having sex. I think that's yeah. so good. <laughs> you know? yeah. And I mean, it, but it kind of also leads back to that episode where you didn't want to talk about it. I was like, Marge was sleeping naked. Oh so, yeah. So apparently, I mean, Marge has a good bed presence. Yeah. Right? Marge, is, Marge is frisky. I actually <laughs> saw, there's an old interview with Julie Kavner, probably from around this time, maybe like a season before, but they ask her what she thinks of Marge. And one of the things she says that I love is she's like, you know, I think she's great. She loves her family. She has a great sex life. Like, <laughs> I think, I think they really, you know, Marge was, I, I like, I like that that was sort of realized about her character. I love yeah. that. Yeah. And so Edna finally asked to meet Woodrow in person for dinner. And then they could go back to her place for some home cooking. cooking. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. We yeah. all got that one. But I like how Bart Bart realizes, like, I caramba. <laughs> like, even Bart knows what's going yeah. on. So, yeah. so we might we might have actually grazed over this, but did, we didn't talk about how when, uh, when he said that he used her photo, he said he used it to gap his spark plugs. I feel like we sort of, like, scrolled over that. But, like, uh. literally... Like every single thing in their letters back and forth is filthy. It's actually sort of problematic if you think about it. Uh, and what was the TV rating on this one? I guess I don't know. They might have changed it from uh, PG to PG, PG 14 TV or TV 14 to TVMA. 
<laughs> a little bit of home cooking. cooking There's that up. homework she was talking about. Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. And so uh, Bart and Edna, you know, write letters while Bart, Bart's in detention. And, well, now Edna is going to the Gilded Truffle to meet with Bart. Or not Bart, but Woodrow. Woodrow. And I love how Bart's just sitting outside the window just laughing at her. Like, That's... his joke is finally co- or his prank has finally come to fruition and it's you know it's the funniest thing in the world too yeah it hit its peak basically and bart's like i got her this far and i'm laughing so now i'm gonna go watch a movie ernest needs a kidney (laughs) yeah based off the ernest character it's so sad too because like she was so hyped for this date i mean she's trying on all these outfits she's checking out her butt in the mirror i love how she's like making sure her butt looks good in the mirror that's Uh really funny i mean she was really excited and you know, Bart sort of, I mean, it, he starts to realize how wrong it was, but it's just so sad seeing her sit there crying yeah. over a melted candle. It's it's horrible. Yeah, yeah. and the, uh, he comes back out from the movie and he's like, you know, that's when it hits him. He's like, ah, crap. I can't feel but feel help. Uh, I can't help but feel partly, partly, re- partly responsible. Partly responsible. <laughs> and, and we all know Bart. Oddly enough, with all the craziness that he does, he has a he has That's, a heart. Yeah, like I think he's still kind of a psychopath. I mean, he is, <laughs> and I mean, we talked uh, the biggest one we talked about was the Thanksgiving episode yep. when you know he didn't even think he loved Lisa anymore. Yeah, like, and then he eventually apologizes. But something like this, where he knows his prank went too far, he sees Edna cry, you know, basically crying. Yeah. And he only feels partly responsible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bart's not very good at being bad. I mean, that's something that, like, I've talked about on my podcast a lot is I think he really, he likes to mess with people and he likes to, you know, give people a hard time. But at, at his core, I really don't think he's, like, a bad kid. Um, yeah. I think when it all, when it, when all the cards are on the table, he actually does start to realize when he's gone too far. So that's something about Bart that people forget. Yeah. So I like that. And so at church, uh, the next, uh, I guess in the next Sunday, yeah, they're <laughs> they're passing around the collection plate, and Homer, you know, <laughs> gives them money because good church going folk do. And Bart tells them that was it's a like twenty, 20. <laughs> money in the swear <laughs> jar. <laughs> and so now he's out bowling, misses a strike, money, money in the swear, swear jar. <laughs> oh my god! And then we cut. Uh, uh, Homer goes outside. Uh, I think they're uh, him and Ned were getting the mail. And yeah, because uh, and Ned had shaved his mustache off, and he's like, "Not soon after, I got cast in a commercial." <laughs> and Homer uh, Homer swears when he hears about all the money that Ned's getting, yeah, money <laughs> into the swear <laughs> jar. And then you know Homer finally builds the doghouse, and Lisa's like, "Well, where? How does the dog go?" And he is <laughs> he is like in the do- swear <laughs> jar money. As this, I love this montage of stuff happening. And yeah, then, I would I would take a whole episode of this plot. Yeah, yeah that was <laughs> pretty good. And then and then Homer's you know lounging out in the hammock, you know sleeping, enjoying the apparently not winter afternoon. Yep, um, yeah, it's summer again. Summer again, and because a beehive lands on him, and you know he swears about this. But to be perfectly honest, if I had a beehive land on me, you bet your ass I'm going to be swearing up and down the street. Oh yeah, getting stung a I, like, thousand I, times. I, I think I'm not putting money in the swear jar. No. Bees yeah. land on me. Come on. I, I do love the fact that when he does put the money in the swear jar, you see all the little bumps where he got stung. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a great, that's great attention to decent. You know, details. I feel like I feel like though that was one of the, wasn't that sort of one of the things he was asking Mark? Yeah, he's like, oh, what if I hit my my hand with the hammer? And she's yeah. Like, yeah, you have to put money in the swear jar. So, I feel, but man, it's such an extreme situation to get stung by thousands of bees. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, um, and so we cut back to the classroom and Bart is cleaning the globe with globe wax. Cause that's a thing. That's, that's a thing. And you know, and is at the desk. She's kind of crying a little bit and he goes, he's like, Oh, there's other good men out there. And he's like, and she's like, well, name one. Well, what about principal Skinner? And he's like, <laughs> his mommy won't let him out to play. <laughs> and I think this is the real, really the first instance where we kind of see mama's boy Skinner almost. Yeah. And I was also thinking, too, because in a future episode, and then Skinner get together, I wonder if maybe this kind of planted the seeds for that episode. Well, she she seems into him. Like, she's like, yeah. oh, I, w- I would like him, but his mom won't let you know. So yeah. I, do, I, I do think this had to have planted that idea because she definitely kind of seems like she would be into him if he would, oh, uh, yeah. you know, hang out with her. What's, uh, you know. Yeah. 
And then he's like, well, what about Coach Fortner? And she goes, glug, glug, glug. <laughs> uh, I, he's an alcoholic. But who is Coach Fortner? I don't know. Who, who is this was. guy? I'm, I'm going to pretend it's the guy that yells bombardment. Bombardment. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll, I'll, we'll, I'll take that until we actually get to that episode. We I can't remember his, his actual name, but I'm going to pretend yeah. that's Coach Fortner. Um, and then he goes, he's like, he's like, well, what about groundskeeper Will, Willie? Well, I won't tell you what he's into. <laughs> I, I want to know what groundskeeper he's Willie is into. He's wearing a kilt I, you know, without no, any I, underwear. Uh, I, think, <laughs> I think I know what he's into. He's into uh, filming people when they're not looking, just like in Homer Batman. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Every single Scottish person does it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so, you know, Edna tells Bart he's the closest thing to a man in her life, and then she and cries. Then, yeah. I mean, that is, I mean, this is, like, the part of the episode that is kind of hits, because, you know, Edna just wants, uh, what's, what any one of us wants is a person to be with, and yeah. she she cries. Um, and so we cut back to uh, Homer hammering some wood, and he hits his hand with the hammer, but he doesn't swear. And then he steps on a nail, and he still doesn't swear. Fiddle dee dee, fiddle dee dee. This will require a tetanus shot. <laughs> all time, all time joke. I made, I wrote this down. I, I think that fiddle dee dee. Uh, you know, there, there are so many things I talked about this episode where I'm like, Dan deserves an award just for this. Yeah. There, he deserves an award just for fiddle dee dee. And I would pay anyone to let me just hear the reel of how many times he said it yeah. to for, to find yeah. that perfect fiddle dee dee. I, I wonder. Hear. I wonder how many times. Yeah, I wonder how many times I had him say fiddle dee dee. Well, Fiddle dee dee. It's perfect. <laughs> it's, Come on. It's really funny because this joke actually, is, I don't know if any of you guys follow Bort posting no. on uh, Facebook, but this uh, is now a huge meme going through the Bort posting community uh, again. Interesting. Oh, wow. And it was funny when I saw the, it was funny when I saw the very first Fiddle dee dee board post, I was like, why does that sound so familiar? <laughs> <laughs> and then I watched this episode. It was like, it just happened to be light up so perfectly that uh, that meme came out while I was watching this episode. I'm like, oh, perfect. <laughs> well, let me, let me, you know, if, if a nail goes all the way through my soul and through the top of my foot, I think I'm getting a free pass on the <laughs> yeah. swear jar. Come on. But she did say, she did tell Homer if he hit his hand with a hammer, which he did. <laughs> he did. So Jesus. <laughs> so Lisa and Marge uh, wheel a doghouse to the backyard. And he's like, we can't afford that. And they're like, well, we use the money from your swear jar. And he's like, and, there, and Marge tells Homer that there's a little bit left. And there's a, there's a surprise for him in the doghouse. <laughs> and then Maggie pops out. And go, Homer's like, oh, Maggie. Woo. He's, like, Mar- he's like, that's cute. That's cute. <laughs> and then Marge's like, no, no, no. Maggie's not the surprise. He's like, look behind Maggie, and there's a six pack of duff. Yeah. She's like, and uh, and he asks Marge how she knew. <laughs> how uh, she come know on. I like beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So uh, then we cut to the inside, and Marge is playing with Maggie, and Bart goes to Marge, and he's like, I know, I know, we're a few years early. But I need help with my love life. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so Lisa's like, I knew it. <laughs> and so then Bart confesses that it's Edna. Yeah. And uh, she sent the picture. She hands the <laughs> picture to Homer. He's like, man. Um, I should start going to parents. Peer teacher, pa- we're parents nights. Nice. <laughs> and Bart just like yanks the picture. Out and of like head. the things that Homer says, just, there's just so much that. Why hasn't Marge left Homer yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just don't so get it. Good. Yeah, like, um, I don't get it either. I mean, who who could ever get it? Let's be honest here. Yeah. You know, and so after that, you know, Homer tells Bart that uh, he needs to tell Edna the truth. And Lisa's like, oh, that would only humiliate. No, Marge. Marge or Marge is like, that would only humiliate her. Lisa suggests, well, why don't we just write one last letter? And, you know, Homer says, you know, <laughs> sensitive love letters are a specialty. Dear I'm, baby, welcome to Dumpville. Population? population? You. Who? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. Is that? Now, here's. Now. It's almost be- worse than getting dumped by text. I know. Well, here's my <laughs> thing, because I've kind of heard that in other TV series. Is that something that The Simpsons kind of came up with? Or is that something like from like the 80s? I don't know. Yeah, that that's a tough one. I mean, I feel like 
you know, this is something that I always talk about, but I think, I think the Simpsons, you know, they didn't create, no, oh, yeah. they, they did like there, but there's a type of joke that, that is a Simpson style joke yeah. that I think every show took from the Simpsons. So at a point it gets really hard to say like, okay, was this influenced by something or is yeah. just, is this just the Simpsons? Well, and, and this is one of the, and, uh, your, your guess, uh, when you did, uh, what was it? Mike Price, it was like episode 15 yeah. or 16. And you had asked him like, what, what is it about the Simpsons? And he kind of said, well, you know, they, st- they stylize this kind of comedy. Yeah. And so, you know, that's that's probably what he was referring to is this, oh, dear baby, welcome to Dumpville, population <laughs> you. Yeah, I, I, do so like, I do like Bart's suggestion, though, writing that a crocodile <laughs> bit his face off. And Marge is like, that shouldn't matter when there's love involved. And Homer <laughs> says, I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> well, because we know Homer, he's, gonna, he's bound to do something stupid and get his face ripped off. Yeah. And Homer wants to, <laughs> Homer's like, three simple words. I am, am gay. gay. <laughs> oh my god. P.S. I'm gay. P.S. I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> and so we do have, um, uh, and then Bart, you know, they, you know, have one last love letter, and I have it here. So, dearest Edna, I must leave you. Why? I cannot say. Where? You cannot know. How will I get there? Eh, I haven't decided yet. But one thing I could tell you. Anytime I hear the wind blow, it'll whisper the name Edna. P.S. And so, let us part with a love that will echo through the ages. P.S. I'm gay. P.S. I'm gay. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's a pretty good follow-up. And I like how, I mean, it's it's almost sad, but it's kind of... You know, it's so weird to see that, you know, Edna's so happy that, not, you know, letter under the door, she's ready to meet him or, you know, something, but then it's the letter and, yeah. you know, I, I think it's sort of enough closure for her. for her to say, all right, you know, I missed on this one, even though it wasn't well, real. Well, it, it, ma- real. It, makes her, it makes her feel like you, like they did want her, but there was something out of their con- out of their control. And I think yes. that, you know, at least makes her feel wanted and. And I, I think there's something really special about all this because even the family, you know, writing the letter together, being brought closer by it, like the yeah. lighting in the room, this like special kind of moment. I think all of that is really, really good. It's re- it's very James L. Brooksy <laughs> to sort of put this nice, clean, like sweet bow on the end of the episode. It's pretty great. Yeah. yeah. And so we kind of close out the episode with Anna and Bart um, in the classroom. And Anna's like, oh, it's such a nice day out. Why don't we uh, go, outside. go outside? And so it seems like, I mean, to me, I don't. I, I honestly, I would love to know the time frame for this episode because <laughs> yeah. Bart was supposed to be in detention for a month. So he's still in detention, and he's still in detention. So is it? Oh yeah, what the hell? It was hot. It snowed. <laughs> you know, this like what all these seasons. I was it think March? It was, was it that stupid smart weather? It had to have been. It had to have been. <laughs> Lousy smart <March> weather. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, this, so was, this is when they must have re- misprinted those calendars. And so uh, we have a picture at over before we get to the credits. We have a picture of Gordy Howe and his career hockey stats, which for those of you that would like to know uh, for National Hockey League games, 1,767 games, 801 goals, 1,049 assists. And that a- adds up to 1,850 points. Wow. His NHL career. That seems really good. I don't yeah. know much about hockey. Is that good? That That's is good. very good. Yes. <laughs> Not as good, good as Wayne Gretzky. But no. It's, it's, it's close. It's close. Uh, for the World Hockey Organization, uh, 419 games, 174 goals, 334 assists, totaling 508 points. Pretty wow. good. And so I'm yeah. guessing mostly Olympics. Probably. Probably for that. How, then, how many games are normally in a hockey season? 82. 82. Well, 82, actually, so like, just start, so, really so, close to basketball, yeah? Yeah, yeah. so, but when Gordy Howe played in the 60s, 70s, I believe early 80s, if I'm remembering his career correctly, I believe they only played, like, 54 games. I think the 82-game oh, wow. format came out later. And also... His nickname is Mr. Hockey. So ah, <laughs> if, yeah, that, if that doesn't tell you how good he was. Yep. Yeah, that, that, that says a lot. <laughs> yeah, And so if you want to put them all together, um, so his whole major league totals, 2,186 games, 975 goals, wow. and 1,383 assists, totaling 
2,358 points. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I love sports, but for some reason, <laughs> hockey. I, I've never been much into hockey, but I'm a, I'm a basketball and football guy. Uh, so, um, for our final thoughts, uh, we have a rating scale for any new listeners out there. Um, it is one, dough, two, eat my shorts, three, don't have a cow man, four, mm, sprinkles, and five, everything's coming up Millhouse. So... Warren, since you were a guest, why don't you uh, give us your your rating? Uh, one being the lowest, five being the highest, and uh, you know, explain a little bit. Uh, obviously, I think we we probably know, but you know, you can explain. I, got, I gotta say, I, I gotta say, I, I'm giving this one a five, and I I think that you know, anyone who listens to my podcast knows that I advocate for newer Simpsons. Also, I I do think there's great episodes of The Simpsons throughout its entire run, but this episode. Like, this is just quintessential classic Simpsons. Like, you know, you hear people say, like, oh, season three is the best season ever. Like, you hear people say this a lot. But it really is. Season three is kind of insane. It's kind of insane. And, you know, when I've seen this episode a (laughs) hundred thousand times, but watching it for this to come on here with you guys, I found myself just laughing every, like, three seconds. This thing is packed to the gills with funny jokes. So, yeah. I mean, I think, I think this one would make a top 10, maybe a top five yeah. for me, uh, especially of this era. And I, I think it's, I think it's perfect. I think the, everything like the lesson Bart learns, the way it brings the family together, it all ties up nicely. Everyone's sort of satisfied by the end. Fucking great episode. Love it. Cool. Um, I, you know, so when I was talking, you know, prior to doing this episode, I was like, you know, it didn't really hit for me. And then as we're going through it and like learning some of the stuff and talking about the jokes, I'm going to go, it's not quite a five for me. It is a fantastic episode after like talking over it with you guys. <laughs> and I-, I will give it a four mm, sprinkles. I, it's a great episode. I love the Gordie Howe reference. I mean, that, that hits me in, in a hockey way. Cause I'm a huge Red Wings fan. The jokes are fantastic. I think I think where it kind of doesn't get me to that five level um, is where they cut to the Homer and Marge talking about that doghouse and it being cold outside, and it just <laughs> it really just threw me off for this episode because it just it kind of came out of left field, like it was just a it just seemed like a random starting off point for this B storyline of Homer not swearing, and so. I, I'm going to go with a four mm, sprinkles. Well, I, I will not to interrupt, but I will say one thing that I noticed when I think about it, at least when they had Homer outside working on the doghouse, he was wearing a hoodie. Okay. So they did They did at least acknowledge a little <laughs> bit that it was cold, which I, which I'm just now sort of thinking about. So yeah, that is I mean, something, but <laughs> I mean, me, I, I do. I'm kind of with Warren. I'm a five. Everything's coming up. Millhouse. I think just where everything went, the yo-yo stuff was amazing. It really reminded me of... Oh, see, I did not interrupt. You know, I totally forgot about the yo-yo Yeah, I mean, it, I, think it just re- <laughs> I think it just reminded me of my school, like, growing up and and going through that sort of same scenario that Bart did, getting something taken away. You know, I, I was never in detention. Like, I never got a yeah. month worth of detention <laughs> not for anything, I guess. But just what Bart goes through and, and what he learns and his prank. Yes. Is funny at first, but he learns from it. And I don't know. It just, it's one of those episodes where it is very cohesive. I think the swear, <laughs> the swear jar stuff just is amazing. It's not something you normally would think about. I think Bart, you know, doing the prank could have been an entire episode. Oh, all absolutely. On its own. Like it didn't really need a B story, but to have just more Flanders and, you know. Well, the thing, the thing too about the swear jar that's so good is like there, there's something, there's something so funny about a curse word being cut off by like, like a hard cut to something. So the yeah. juxtaposition of just like you know what he's about to say, hard cut to the change in the in the swear jar. Yeah. That in itself is so perfectly comedic visually, just untouchable. So yeah, good. absolutely. And so, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, five. Everything's coming up, Melhouse. So let's close it out uh, like we always do with our character profile. And this week we have the wonderful fictional Woodrow and his, his alias, Bart Simpson. Yeah. Uh, reason for deception, 
Retaliation at teacher for taking away his yo-yo. I mean, that seems pretty dramatic. <laughs> he was pissed, though. He wanted his yo-yo, man. Yeah. The hot new thing. He had to have his damn yo-yo back. Yeah. That's right. All right. So next up, his turn-ons. Holding hands. Dinner by candlelight. Writing romantic letters. So that, yeah. that seems so pretty good. Sexy uh, photographs. Sexy, sexy <laughs> photographs. That's right. Um, next, really hates. Yo-yos. Because <laughs> who doesn't hate yo yo Well, he was trying to get Kerbobbles, you know, you know, hard. Yeah, just trying, just trying to work. Just home trying cooking. to gap his own. Just trying to gap his spark plugs. Yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> Carries a fabric torch for Ender Kerbop. Or sorry, fabricated. Carries a fabricated torch for and Ender Kerbobble. Uh, <laughs> Truly yours is a butt that won't quit. P.S. I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, that's Bart the Lover for you guys. So, um, Warren, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, yeah, this was this fantastic. With us. No, hey, thank you guys for asking me to come on, and you know, I I really. I really appreciate any chance to uh, run my mouth about the Simpsons, and I'm sure everybody knows that if they listen to my podcast or if they follow me online, they know I they know I don't shut up. So I appreciate any opportunity to do that, and it was really fun to hang out with you guys. I really appreciate it. Cool. So everyone, you can find us, me and Robert, um, on Facebook, The Simpsons Did It Podcast, on Instagram, The Simpsons Did It Pod, on Twitter, Simpsons Did It PC. Um, our podcasts are in video-ish format on uh, video-ish. YouTube. <laughs> um, just go to youtube.com, type in Simpsons Did It Podcast, search by channel, and you'll find our podcast. Please subscribe if you have the opportunity. Um, if you guys feel like that we deserve a little kickback, you can head over to buymeacoffee.com backslash Simpsons Did It and buy us a duff. And all your support goes to getting us merchandise, stickers, um, hats, shirts stuff like that um so be sure to support us in any way possible if you don't want to no problem obviously podcast is free for you to listen to but if you like swag and you want some stuff be sure to uh support us over there and uh warren where can everyone uh find you well everyone can find me and also i gotta say that coffee thing sounds sweet and i love coffee so i need to set one of those up um <laughs> but if you guys want to see my simpsons collection you can find me on instagram at bart of darkness I post uh, photos about all the stuff that I've uh, collected over the last eight years or so, and uh, I give a little background on all of that there. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Bart of Darkness with an underscore because there's some jerk that has an inactive <laughs> account that oh. will not give me his Twitter uh, and is driving me nuts. Uh, if you want to, if you want to follow the podcast on Instagram, it's at Simpsons is Greater Than, and if you want to follow it on Twitter, it's at Simpsons is Great. And uh, yeah, come say what's up. Come uh, be my friend. I would appreciate that. Awesome. So until next time, I'm Steven Skolansky. I'm uh, your co-host, Robert Skolansky. And this has been The Simpsons Did It. <laughs>